Hey, Vinyl Community, Mark here again from Sound Matters, covering all things vinyl, as always. Hope you're all having a great week, obviously, hopefully, filled with lots of great music in the process as well. Now, I recently just released a video on how to use a carbon fibre record brush that got quite a lot of attention. If you haven't seen that video already, then you can check it out at the link that should pop up in the corner of the screen right now. Now, a lot of people agreed with my method of how to use one of these brushes, while other people disagreed quite strongly. So that begs the question, am I wrong? We're going to go through that today and hopefully answer some common questions about the pros and cons of different record cleaning methods with one of these brushes in the process. Let's get straight into it. So, am I wrong? Well, I think at the end of the day, when it comes to the world of hi-fi, especially the world of vinyl, that aspect of it, there are many different opinions on the right way to do things that is beneficial for the longevity of your record collection. And while there are many opinions out there, there are a lot of uh, parallels in people's opinions, many things that people commonly agree on, and there are also pros and cons to each method that people suggest. There are some methods out there that I think are objectively bad or wrong and then there are other aspects where it's kind of deviation based on people's assessment of the risk and what they feel most comfortable with. So today I'm going to go through the three most common methods of how to use one of these brushes including the method that I mentioned in the previous video and just discuss some of the pros and cons of each one. So this is the first method of course from the previous video whereby you just gently tickle the surface with both sides of the fibres and allow the record to rotate a few times before eventually rotating the brush so that the back fibres catch anything that the front fibres didn't catch and then when you're ready after a few more cycles gently lift the brush off the record surface. So you can see here that the brush has captured quite a bit of dust, you can see that on the camera quite clearly. Now, as some people mentioned, you can get a small trail of dust left behind, like a line of dust. You can see a little bit of specks left on the surface here, but it's not too bad. And in my experience, you repeat the process and this will go away eventually. The second method is, of course, exactly the same as the first one, except you don't lift the brush directly off the record surface. Instead, when you get to the end of the process, you simply drag the brush very gently towards the edge of the record surface. Now, this is admittedly less likely to leave a small line of dust requiring perhaps less repeat processes, but you are dragging some of those particles across the surface against the grooves. Now, as you can see, there are still some particles on the surface of the record. Despite this method, this record is a bargain basement record and does need a wet clean. So, you know, of course, these brushes are not miracle workers. They can't remove everything. And sometimes you just need to wet clean the record. The third and final method, of course, is the one where we move towards the center spindle and allow those carbon fiber brushes to touch that center spindle in the hope of discharging some static electricity. Now, I like the idea of this, but as some people pointed out in the comments, I'm not entirely sure that this will fully work unless your spindle is connected to a ground in some way, form or another. It is worth mentioning as well, of course, at this point, that this is the AudioQuest brush with the gold contacts, which is supposed to help you become the ground and discharge some of that static electricity. But in my experience, any of these brushes, including this one, are not particularly effective at removing static electricity charge. Wet cleaning or using an anti-static gun are much better methods to actually eliminate static electricity in terms of the charge. So to summarise then with that first method, admittedly there is a little bit more work potentially involved here. That line of dust can be really annoying. We may have to repeat that process a few times to get rid of that line and that can be a bit tedious. Saying that though, if this is just maintenance of records, keeping dust at bay, it's something you do on a regular basis, then that line of dust shouldn't be too much of an issue for you. Looking at the second method, of course, I do get the point that if you drag the brush across, you are less likely to have that line of dust there, but we do have to factor in the fact that we are factoring the fact. We do have to factor in that we potentially are dragging dust and particles against the grooves across the record surface. With that third method, I do think there is some logic in it, but I agree with the comments that were put out there. Um, among the wider vinyl community that for that to have any chance of happening you need to have that center spindle grounded. 
There's more, much more to cover on the topic of this video, of course, but just for a moment, I want to thank the sponsors of Sound Matters for their continued support. First up is Groove Washer, who make my absolute favorite record cleaning fluid to use by hand, but also on record cleaning machines. Next up, of course, is 12 Inch, who make the beautiful bamboo-based record display systems that I use to display records on the wall behind me in every video, and of course, picture discs as well. Finally, it's Vinyl Moon, who are the best record subscription service if you love art-driven vinyl releases and discovering new artists. Each month, they work with a different artist to create beautiful and creative vinyl mixtapes of the best emerging music from around the globe. You'll find a discount code for each sponsor in the description, of course, but it's time to get back to the video and the topic. So at the end of the day, there are definitely pros and cons to each method. And a lot of it, I think, boils down to your own assessment of risk and just how much patience you have. Now, the instructions that I put forward are based on my interpretation of the AudioQuest instructions that were actually on the back of the packaging of the AudioQuest brush. Now, other people seem to have interpreted AudioQuest's instructions slightly differently. Maybe, who knows, maybe AudioQuest have changed their instructions or their uh, suggested instructions over the years. Who knows, without having packaging from every single record brush they've ever released and every different incarnation of that release, then there's no real way to tell. But that's just my interpretation of it. Now, have I ever been lazy and kind of decided, ah, I'll just drag the brush across, the dust's not coming off? Absolutely. But what I would say as well is if you are still getting lots of record surface dust or particles that are just not going away on the record, surface using the method that I put forward, I'd kind of suggest that it's probably time to wet clean that record anyway, because the brush isn't getting rid of everything and who knows what else is lurking down in the record groove. It's probably at that point, if you can't get rid of the dust easily, then it's probably time to give the record a bit of a wet clean to mop up all the rest of it anyway, whether that be by hand, or whether it be using a record clean machine, if you're lucky enough to own one of those, or you know, even an ultrasonic record cleaning machine. So I think I've talked enough about record brushes for one day, but I hope you found this useful in some way. And I'd like to thank you all out there for sharing your experiences, your opinions, and your advice out there from the wider vinyl community, both in the last video that I've done, all the other topics that we've discussed, and hopefully down in the comments of this video too. Thank you ever so much. I really do appreciate hearing all of your perspectives out there in that wider vinyl community on YouTube and beyond. Now in news going forward, I am looking forward to hopefully this week receiving a degritter ultrasonic record cleaning machine. So I'm going to be putting together a full review of that unit. I believe it's going to be the Mark II unit that I'm receiving as well. I know there's a new version that's just been released. So I'm really looking forward to digging into that cleaning machine. I know it's widely popular but also controversially quite expensive as well. So I'm looking forward to that review and I hope that you'll join me for that when it's released. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please do consider subscribing. We'd love to have you on board. And until then, keep spinning. We'll see you in that next video.